Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Savile and welcome to Memcast Paces Resources. This session is aimed at candidates who are preparing for their Paces exam. In our last video, we looked in detail about how to perform the respiratory examination. And this week, we're going to be looking at how to summarise your clinical findings and discuss the case with your examiner. By the end of this video, and with independent practice, we expect you should be able to 1. Identify clinical signs and their relevance 2. Present findings in a clear and concise manner and 3. Construct a differential diagnosis and management plan for a respiratory condition. So first, we'll show you a run-through of the respiratory exam. Perhaps pause the video after the examination is complete and practice how you would summarise the findings. today. I was just going to examine your chest if that's okay. Yeah, Are you yeah. in any pain at all? No. Okay. Brilliant. So I'm just going to start by having a quick look at you from the end of the bed and then we'll come in and have a look at your hands. Okay. okay. Let's have a quick look at your hands. Can I just get you to do that with your fingers for me? Lovely. And then if you pop your hands straight out in front of you and put your wrists back like that and just hold them. Fantastic. Thank you. You can pop them down. I'm going to have a quick look in your eyes if that's okay. Can you just pop your glasses off for me? I'm just going to put your, pull your eyelid down slightly. Fantastic. Thank you. And can I have a quick look in your mouth? If you just pop the mask down shortly. And just lift your tongue up for me. So I'm just going to have a quick feel of your neck now. Might be a little bit uncomfortable. Okay. And if you can just turn your head over to the left for me. Great. Thank you. And look forward. Let's go have a feel of your neck. If you sit forward for me. And if you rest back now. Just can have a closer look at your chest now if that's okay. Would you mind just bringing your gown down just to below your waist? Thank you. And if I get you to take a deep breath in for me and all the way out. Lovely. Okay. Just can I have a look under this arm. I'm just going to have a feel of your chest now as well. So if you can take a deep breath in for me. And out. Great. And again. I'm going to put my hands on your chest. Every time I do that, I'd like you to say 99 for me. 99. 99. Just under your arms here. 99. 99. Great. I'm just going to have a quick uh, tap on your chest now as well, okay? I'm just going to have a quick listen on the front now. Give you a deep breath in and out through your mouth as I listen to your chest. Again, if you could say 99 for me. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. 99. Great, thank you. 
So I'm just going to repeat all of that on the back if that's okay. Would you mind just sitting forward for me? And take a deep breath in for me. And again. Say 99 for me. 99. 99. 99. Okay. Just going to have another tap on your chest. Take some deep breaths in and out through your mouth for me. If I just get you to say 99 again for me. Now's your opportunity to pause the video and think of how you'd present your findings, what your differentials would be and what management plan you'd form, including investigations. Then you can continue the video and see how we've done it for this case. Would you like to present your findings? Yes, thank you. So I had a young female patient um, who looked comfortable at rest. Um, she did have some clubbing on her, finger, on her fingers, um, but the respiratory weight was normal. She had no signs of uh, pallor, which could indicate anemia, um, and no central peripheral cyanosis. On examination of the chest, there were no scars. Um, she had reduced chest expansion bilaterally, uh, which was even and symmetrical. Um, the tactile and vocal fremitus were both normal, um, and percussion was also normal. On auscultation of the chest, however, there was some fine end inspiratory crepitations bilaterally. Okay, so what are your differentials? So at the top of my differential list would be a fibrotic lung disease, um, but other causes of bilateral uh, crepitations could be uh, pulmonary edema, uh, infection, so bilateral pneumonia. Um, but I would expect the nature of those crepitations to be different. Okay, so how would you like to go about investigating this patient? Okay, thank you. So we already mentioned some bedside tests, so the respiratory rate and the oxygen saturations would be important. Um, I'd like to do some blood tests, so we would do a full blood count and a C-reactive protein, um, as well as an autoimmune screen and a vasculitis screen looking for causes of fibrosis. Um, in terms of imaging, I would do a chest x-ray initially, but the gold standard for investigating fibrosis would be a high resolution CT scan. Um, I'd also perform uh, or request pulmonary function tests, so spirometry, looking for a restrictive rather than an obstructive picture. Okay. And are you aware of any treatment options for lung fibrosis? Um, so dependent on the cause, I think if it's found to be due to a medication, then obviously looking to see if we could change that medication to something else and stop the offending drug would be a good idea. Um, there are some patients that are treated with steroids in an acute flare-up, um, but in terms of long-term management, uh, patients can be referred to the fibrosis MDT, whereby um, it might be decided that they get an antifibrotic drug such as perfenidone, um, or some patients might be a candidate for lung transplant. Okay. And are you aware of any causes of lung fibrosis? Yeah, so um, there's drug-induced uh, lung fibrosis, 
there's idiopathic lung fibrosis. Um, so just going back to the drug causes, it can be things like methotrexate or amiodarone, nitroenterin, look for recent antibiotic causes. Um, sometimes you can get fibrosis post-infection, so things like TB. Um, and you can also um, get some fibrosis from uh, sarcoidosis and silicosis, so asking for um, a, uh, occupational history would also be important. Okay. And you had mentioned an autoimmune screen in the test that you do. What autoimmune conditions are you aware of that would cause lung fibrosis? Um, so rheumatoid arthritis, um, so both the disease itself and also treatment, so things like methotrexate could cause. Um, SLE uh, and uh, you, would, you would do a kind of vasculitis screen as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now's your time to go away and practice with your Pacers buddy. Memcast have got some other MRCP related material. There's MCQs and facts of the week over on our Instagram page at mem.cast. And we have weekly podcast episodes available on all streaming platforms. So from everyone here at Memcast, good luck with your exam preparations and we'll see you again soon.